Okay, today's mission is to take my primary workstation here, get it connected to the smart home through Google, and I know you can do this through Wake on LAN and through various other software and services, but it's unreliable in my experience, and it's also somewhat of a security risk having uh, to modify the ARP tables in your router, and it sucks. The been there, done that. We're going to do it with hardware today. Today's mission is to take our old friend here. If you've seen my other videos where I automated the garage door to open and close using Google Smart Commands, this is the same board. And the way this works is basically, uh, if you haven't seen the previous video, I guess I'll go over it real quick. You have a Wi-Fi chip on here. It connects to your Wi-Fi. And then basically you've got an input power supply where it needs, as you can see on the PCB here, positive 5 volts and a ground or you can plug in a micro USB over here to a USB port, which happens to be five volts. Uh, and then on this side, you have your output. Now you install an app on your phone, Android or Apple called EWI Link, and that'll allow you to control this via that mobile application. That mobile application ties into Google, so you can give it verbal commands like OKG, OK, turn on my whatever you want this thing to control. So today's project I thought of is I want to turn on and off my computer uh, from anywhere I am with an internet connection and also from within the house using the OKG OK turn on my computer or turn off my computer which I think would be really cool. Doing this with hardware will allow us to not have to deal with any port forwarding, not have to worry about having a device on all the time on the network in order to send that wake on LAN packet, and it'll have the added bonus of shutting down the computer when we say, okay, G, turn off the computer. And the way this is going to work is basically, I'm going to take my 5 volts from the ATX connector on the motherboard. Okay, so you can see here, this is a standard 24 pin, pin 1 to 24. Uh, ATX connector. And you've got all these nice grounds, the black guys here. So plenty of grounds. And what you may not know is that a 24 pin ATX connector has this guy, pin number 9, purple, which is 5 volt standby. What that means is this purple pin here is always getting 5 volts. That is absolutely perfect for what we need. So basically we're going to take the positive 5 standby here and whichever ground we want, I guess we'll take the closest one. And we're going to tie those into our positive 5 and ground here to give power to this board. So this board will always have power. As long as the computer's plugged into the wall, it'll have power. Okay, and the on switch is on on your power supply, I guess I should say, right? Uh, but it'll always have power. So when you turn your computer off, it's actually the motherboard, everything's shut down except for this pin. All right, and that's enough to keep this guy awake, and that's all we need. So if this is awake and it's connected to Wi-Fi, configured through the application and everything else, when we give it the command, OKG, OK, turn on the computer, the output over here, which we're going to connect to our motherboard's positive and negative pin on the header, which also goes to the power switch, is basically OKG, OK, turn on the computer. It's going to momentary push those as if I push the button physically on the computer. And when I say turn off the computer, OKG, OK, turn off the computer, it's going to momentarily push that button again, and you can set that in the operating system to stand by or shut down, whatever you want it to do. All right, I've got mine set to shut down. We're going to get some pieces of wire to use as jumpers to get these uh, connected into the appropriate places on my computer, and uh, I'll be back with you in a few minutes once I get that off the wall. Well, I had originally planned on using just good old Ethernet cable. I found some old project wire, so I'm going to use this. It's solid, not sure what gauge it is, but it's got enough rigidity where I won't have to actually solder any of this stuff in there. I'm just going to show you how to poke it under some of the pins and like make a little crimp in there. That'll be good enough connection. One thing I do want to do after looking at this board a little closer, since I'm going to be mounting this with this uh, Velcro-like adhesive, I don't want to use a million of these. I only need one or two. What I'm going to do is these solder points, some of them are pretty deep on there, a couple millimeters. Um, I don't want that making contact with the chassis when I adhere this. So I'm just going to take some old plastic here, this almond milk container in this case, trace it out, cut it out with a razor, and hot glue it to the back of this to act as an insulator. 
Then I'll stick my Velcro to the back of that so I can adhere it to the chassis. Go throw this back in the recycling bin. One more thing I just noticed, I want to show you. Before I glue this on here, whichever way it's going to go to protect the chassis when I attach this later, the markings NC, if you can see that, NC and NO are on the back of this PCB, so they're going to be covered by what I'm about to glue there. So we're looking for, well, to close through a momentary push, a normally open circuit. So I want this one normally open. So before I glue that protector on there, I'm just going to mark this one. That's my normally open, so I marked it there with a marker, so I know that's the one I'm going to be using, this post. And the middle one's got nothing, that's your ground. So we're using these two pins, all right? The center one and the normally open. So when we give it the command, open or close, it's going to momentarily close those two pins, which we're going to attach to the header on the motherboard to momentary push the button as if we were hitting the power switch on the computer. Got a bunch of nice blobs on here. Plenty enough to raise it off all those large solder areas. Great. Got our piece and bam. That's seated nicely. No more risk of shorting. Okay, so like we talked about before, we're going to shoot for a ground for the power supply. 5 volt standby, which is the purple pin on the ATX. First thing I'm going to do is put some new strips on here. And for my location, I'm going to need about that much to get to the power supply. Do the same length here. Ethernet cable would work great for this if you have a box laying around or an old patch cable. We've got our power line, so I'm going to strip just enough on this and this for my purposes. And for ground, we're going to do black. And for me, I don't have any of the our colors ran out of red. We're going to use green for our positive. Okay, so we've got our power coming in. Now we just need to make some jumpers for our power, for our switch, I should say. We can trim this to size later. I'm just using a little excess for now. Same size, our length. Great. We marked our normally open position and ground, or common. Polarity doesn't matter, it's just a momentary switch. Everything looks good there. If you want to get a little crazy, you can dab some hot glue in there just to add some reinforcement. I think I'm going to pass on that. Now I'll show you where I'm thinking about mounting this. So for my purposes, I'm going to take this board that we just rigged up and I'm going to mount it down there so I have access to these two buttons. This is a function switch. You can change uh, some of the programming advanced options here, like how long to hold the press. Uh, we're not messing with that one. This is to get it all set up and synchronized, so we'll need access to that. Otherwise, I would have mounted this on the other side. But just in case I ever need to access it again, I'm going to stick it underneath the reservoir in the back there, out of sight. Okay. Uh, so, our power is going to run around on the other side to the ATX connector behind there. Our switch leads on my motherboard are down here and it's labeled power switch. I'm going to pull that jumper off the header. I guess I'll bring you in there so you can see what it looks like. 
power SW, power switch. So what's nice about these connectors is you can kind of stuff a wire down in there and uh, get it to crimp on. So I'm going to try that out. Hopefully this gauge isn't too thick. We'll see how it works out. And when you do this, you're going to have to strip probably a whole maybe an inch. I did a half inch, not enough, because so you have to bend it at 90. Right, so I'm going to strip a little bit more. So now, take this guy back, slide it in. This might be a little bit too long, but you want to be able to bend it back, you see, all the way around. This looks like I'd say a 50-50 chance we're going to get this over that spot. Well, a little bit of wiggling, it actually went in there pretty nice. Don't force it, don't push too hard. If you feel like it won't go, that's because it probably won't. If you're using Ethernet, Ethernet's a little bit thinner of a gauge than this uh, project wire I'm using. You'll probably have an easier time. Mine worked out very nicely. Bam. There you go. See, that's the final wiring. You've got these guys tucked in under the original connectors. No need to solder or cut anything. You've got this mounted in the bottom right. The wire's all wrapped around where no one's really going to see them up there. I'm going to feed these around back through the slot back there. And we'll see on the other side of this case. Welcome to the back side of my case. This is not the best wire management because it's covered. This is used to be super pretty wire management back here, but I don't care anymore because it's all covered and there's nothing being seen back here anymore. So, as we recall, we're going to go for pin number nine and the nearest ground. All right, we're going to take the other sides of these, which is our switch leg, to power on and off the computer and put them in the appropriate locations. So there, the only purple wire is one of our wires and two more away from that is black. Now what you can do with this is simply find that purple wire, which is number four leg here, right? One, two, three, four. And stick this guy right in the connector bend it up. Now you've got to leave enough for the insulation when you do this trick. I've done this a bunch of times before. The insulation has to be cut all the way up there. right? So you need a really long strip. Now find the ground. Make sure it's a black wire, whichever one you're using. Mine's two away. Right in the middle. Bend it up, straight up. All the way. Now if you're going straight into your motherboard with this, same thing. Just make sure those two don't touch. All right, I'm gonna hold them there. You could also stick them from the top as well and glue them there. Just make sure you have a good connection. I feel like doing mine this way. And then, you see how nice that's going? Everything's connected in there. No solder. All right, now, one last thing. You might wanna put some soldering tape just so you bend around back and forth and snap off or some crazy crap. Uh, or zip tie this actually I think that's what I'll do zip tie it right like there you've got some exposed copper you might want to throw some electrical tape where you can just be more careful with your strip than I was uh, but those are great connections in there they're actually crimped on there so we're about done so I'm gonna put a zip tie a little bit of electrical tape since this is on the back I don't care about how it looks uh, and go from there Long zip tie. Not going anywhere. Back up on the wall where she belongs. Keep new PCBs down there. That'll be covered when the window goes back on. Uh, anyways, first test. Power supply on. 
And as you can see, that's a great song. Our friend down there has power from the 5 volt standby, just like he's supposed to. So now we just need to set that up. The second thing I want to test is make sure that my manual power switch still works. So, power on. And she works. Pretty. Yeah, I've got my phone down here for you. I'm in the EWE Link app. As you can see, I have two of these great PCB set up in other devices in the house. One is my garage door, the other is the aromatherapy. Uh, and that one's got all custom commands in it, which is neat. And that's another video. Uh, anyhow, so what we're supposed to do is hold the button over here, the top one, or I should say the middle one, until it starts blinking, which means it's looking. Now it's blinking. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So now we go and look for it. Had to turn off the camera for a second there and change over to my 2.4 gigahertz. Those devices only work with 2.4. Okay, so if you don't have that enabled, you're gonna have to turn it on in addition to your 5 gigahertz for compatibility reasons. Let's try that again. Add, next. Trying to connect device. It says it found a second generation device. Registering. Now we're going to give it a name and I'm going to call mine Computer. Maybe workstation. Eh, we'll leave a computer for now. You can always change it later. Complete. Got it. Cool. So now, if I hit this on switch, if all goes well on the app, this will turn on. Then we can get into the voice commands. Let's try that. And she turned on. I know why. Because, I know this from the garage door, this other button, it's a different mode, and that just held down the button for a long period of time and confused the computer. So I'm going to click that again. Now you see only one LED is on and one's off. Let's try that again. On with the app. Ha, huh. and this time it's booting like it should. Now after you have your EWE Link device interfaced with Google, there's a couple more things you need to do to get the verbal commands working properly. So you have to go into your Google Home app, and you have to go into Routines, then you're going to hit the plus sign, and you're going to add new routines. So the first thing you're going to do is give it a verbal command, or a set of all the command triggers you want it to for turn on or turn off. So let's do a turn on. I'm going to do Turn on computer, turn on workstation, turn computer on, turn workstation on, and that's good enough for now. Now I'm going to go back. So those are my verbal triggers. Now I'm going to say I need to add an action. And I'm going to choose popular actions. Now pay attention here because I just got caught in a circle for like five minutes because it wasn't very intuitive. Uh, add lights, plugs, and more. Settings. I'm going to go to the room, office. These are all smart devices in the house. Let's do office computer. And we want to turn on. Go back. Now here's the fun part. There's no save button. If you click back, it'll erase everything you just did. I did that like five times before I realized. You have to click add in the top right, and that's going to add the routine under here, under add action. Now you're done. 
check that off. Now one other thing I want to note, and this is very important, there's either a bug or a functional issue with these boards where for some reason when you trigger it to hit off, it doesn't do a momentary push. If anyone can figure that out, uh, please let me know. I've asked in the forums, I haven't been able to get an answer. I do have a workaround, which is basically when you create your turn on, turn off, all right, uh, you, instead of under off, your action is actually going to be, you'll see how I have this set up, is office computer is turn on. Confusing, right? When you say turn off, the trigger is actually going to be turn on, but that doesn't matter because turn on is the same functional momentary push as turn off, but for some reason turn off doesn't do the momentary push on the board. I don't know why, I think it's a bug, whatever, for now this works great. When you say turn off, it's going to push. When you say turn on, it's going to push, and that's all we need. And I'm not going to say the OKG command. I'm just going to hold down the button on my phone to trigger it so I don't mess with your own voice recognition. Turn on workstation. There you go. See it acknowledged it. If I would have said OKG OK, in the kitchen or anywhere else in the house, that would work. I can do that from anywhere with an internet connection outside of the house. No need to worry about wake on LAN packet routing. Here's an added bonus I didn't mention before. Notice the computer light is blue right now. Well, if you use a Philips Hue strip in your computer, uh, you can change the color with verbal commands to anything you want, like change the color of the computer to purple. Change the computer lights to orange. Sure, changing the computer lights to orange. Change the computer lights to the color red. Sure, changing the computer lights to red. But anyways, that's another story. Quick simple mod though, just add the hue strips to your computer and what I did was put white accents in there uh, so it picks up the color of whatever you change it to, right? So pretty neat. This way you don't get bored of the same color scheme. But anyway, uh, let's do what we came here to do. The workstation is currently running. Let's give it a command. Turn off the workstation. And you can see it says shutting down. This is still in the process, but it's getting there. The computer is now off. I have my lighting powered separately so the lighting stays on even if the computer's off. That's a separate command, separate power supply. Uh, let's turn it back on again. Turn the workstation on. And okay, turning it's on alive again. So that settles that. So if you like this video, please hit subscribe. Uh, I'll link to the part I used in the description, uh, that PCB. It's very useful, lots of fun to use it in other places in the house where you need to connect any smart devices that need a momentary push button. Lots more to come on the smart home products and making them link in unique ways. Um, check out my other videos, the garage door opener, I used one of these PCBs and I'm going to be making another one for my under cabinet lighting. But subscribe for more videos, hit like. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below, and I'll see you next time.